In 2022, I had the honor and pleasure of visiting the old Ignalina nuclear power plant, twice, within the span of a month. At the time, the facility had gained a little bit more attention after being featured in the HBO production Chernobyl, part of which was filmed at the power plant in August 2018. I knew the power plant was in the process of being dismantled, and I knew it would take a long time, but I had no idea that tours of the inside of the plant would no longer be available in such a short amount of time. Apparently, they stopped in July 2023, about a year after I went. Thus, I feel extra lucky to have had the opportunity. But as more and more of the plant gets shut down and dismantled, its original energy source and the heart of its activities becomes a problem. Indeed, Lithuania is currently looking for the safest site for all that spent nuclear fuel. I was somewhat surprised when talking to the power plant's communications rep that no one knows where the fuel is going to be stored. I guess as a regular member of the public, you kind of expect that governments know all this stuff well in advance. But no, that's not the case. The decision to shut down Ignalina and dismantle it was made before determining the fate of its spent nuclear fuel. And so it's this whole situation that we'll look at for today's video. As reported by LRT at the end of July 2024, a future site needs to be a geologically appropriate and safe location with the understanding that this harmful radioactive material will be buried underground. A lot of careful planning and evaluation needs to take place since this material will remain hazardous for generations into the future. Yolanta Chishiene, a deputy director at the Lithuanian Geological Survey, told the media that the future site for a repository will be chosen on the basis of geological and tectonic parameters, as well as the stability of the future structures in deep layers and the isolation of waste from the geological environment. During an interview with LRT Radio, she said, We must choose the safest and most suitable site first. The storage of radioactive waste in storage facilities is only a temporary solution, and a deep repository is the safest way in the world. Apparently, decision makers have quite a lot of time. In fact, Lithuania needs to pick a site for the deep repository by 2047. But the clock is ticking, since it's going to be a long and difficult process to find a suitable place that won't experience too much resistance from locals. Extensive research will be required, and this includes a geological suitability assessment, which considers factors like safety, environmental impact, and social and economic criteria. Then, once a site is chosen, the repository will be completed by 2068. Currently, radioactive waste from the Ignalina nuclear power plant is stored in interim storage facilities. It's this waste that will eventually go to the repository in future decades. According to Ignalina NPP's official website, there are currently about 22,000 fuel assemblies at the site, equating to 2,500 tons of spent nuclear fuel. This spent nuclear fuel at the site is currently being stored in Constore RBMK 1500 casks at a special storage facility on site, but it's one kilometer away from the power units. Older spent fuel was stored in metal Castor RBMK 1500 casks. The newer Constore casks currently being used are made of reinforced concrete and consist of two thin walled cylinders of special steel and the gap between these cylinders is filled with concrete. The size of each cask is 4.5 meters high and 2.5 meters in diameter, and the weight of each cask is 118 tons after being loaded with fuel. The thickness of the cask walls must be such that the radiation dose rate on the cask surface does not exceed permissible limits and poses no danger to service personnel or the environment. Furthermore, the casks must be resistant to explosion, fire, flood, earthquakes, and even light drops from higher elevations, like from an aircraft. So. Yeah, all these casks full of tons of spent nuclear fuel will eventually make their way to the future deep geological repository. But the clock is definitely ticking, since interim storage of radioactive waste in those containers is estimated to be safe for only around 50 years. In addition to the spent fuel, other stuff that will be buried deep underground includes metal structures of reactors, parts of fuel assemblies and control rods, graphite used in the reactor, used ionizing radiation sources, and other radioactive waste. Spent nuclear fuel is the most hazardous. As Ignalina's website states, the radionuclides in the spent nuclear fuel emit alpha particles and have a long half-life, and so it will take several hundred thousand years for spent nuclear fuel to become non-hazardous. This includes material like uranium-235 and 238, 
radium-226, plutonium-239, and various isotopes of nickel, carbon, and iodine. When authorities talk about a geologically stable environment, they're essentially saying that it has to be somewhat safe from the threat of earthquakes and other geological activity. Groundwater flow at the repository environment must be as low as possible, for obvious reasons. There are several suitable geological formations in Lithuania on the radar, including places with crystalline rocks and various clays. I'm not going to read the entire timeline that you see here, but you can pause it and read what we can expect in terms of progress for the repository. In terms of finding existing examples, we can look at Finland's Okkilioto Island Repository, which is apparently the world's first final repository for spent nuclear fuel. The repository isn't even operating yet, and is only expected to receive its first spent fuel in the next few years. This Finnish repository will be able to handle spent fuel for at least 100,000 years. A project spokesperson says that the repository must have a depth of 430 meters and that the facility has a combination of shafts and an access tunnel. As the site continues to expand, tunnels will eventually reach a length of around 50 kilometers. For this project in Finland, 6,500 tons of spent nuclear fuel will be placed into approximately 3,250 canisters. It's a lot more than the 2,500 tons that Lithuania needs to deal with. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how Lithuania's search and selection of a deep repository will go. There is a lot of land in Lithuania, but it's also a relatively small country. And how much of it is geologically suitable? And then how much of that is far enough away from people that there won't be any protests? Well, I guess all that is quite a few years down the road. But according to a December 2023 article, Latvia has already expressed concerns about Lithuania placing its repository near the border. At the time the article came out, it was stated that the government was looking into 77 sites around Lithuania. According to an article by science.org, Finland didn't have much trouble selecting its site on Okeldoto Island. Apparently, it was because nearby residents were already comfortable with nuclear power. But it hasn't been the case for other countries around the world trying to find places to store their nuclear waste. This has ranged from protests in France. People who grew up in the area near the village of Bureau are not impressed. They see not only the destruction of their local forest, but also a threat to the safety of their soil. They're raising questions over how the scientists can be so sure their underground nuclear dustbin would remain sealed and safe. All the way to the United States, which has seen 30 years of resistance to a plan to store waste at a site in Nevada. Congress designated Yucca Mountain as the location for a national permanent nuclear waste repository back in 1987. Senator Catherine Cortez Masto of Nevada has been fighting Yucca Mountain for over 20 years. Actually, days after I finished making this video, the German public broadcaster, DW, put out a video about France's nuclear waste recycling program. Now, to me, that sounds like the way to deal with Lithuania's and the world's nuclear waste. In fact, I understand that several countries, like the Netherlands and Australia, are, or at least were, sending their nuclear waste to France for recycling. From what I read, 96% of spent nuclear fuel, which consists of 95% uranium and 1% plutonium, can be reused to manufacture new fuel, which will then supply more electricity in turn. Unfortunately, however, the process seems to be really expensive, and it's why some countries don't do it anymore, even though France seems to be committed to making it work. Anyways, it doesn't seem to be the direction that Lithuania is going in, and so when it comes to the topic of this video, it might just be a waste of time to discuss nuclear waste recycling any further, even if I think it should be on the table. It's crazy to me that humans developed nuclear technology decades ago, and only now are we addressing the long-term problem of how to deal with spent nuclear fuel and hazardous radioactive waste. But anyways, I'm curious to know what you think about it all. If you have some idea of Lithuania's geology, comment and tell us where you think a possible repository will go. Also, let me know if you're interested in more topics related to the Ignalina nuclear power plant. I think there are quite a few interesting videos I can make on it. And if not, it's okay, I'll find something else. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoy this channel and want to support me in making more videos, please consider becoming a Patreon patron. There is a link down in the description for you to check out. Thanks so much for watching. Disposal will continue until all the spent nuclear fuel at Posiva's possession has been safely disposed of in the Okiluoto bedrock.